Good morning, everyone. I'm gonna take you on a tour of my woodland garden. It's very green and lush right now and pretty much over its peak, but there are some problems that I wanted to talk about. Okay guys, first up is my Jack in the Pulpit and Golden Alexander's patch. So right here, this is where the anemones had been and those have died back. So here are the anemones and then over the past couple years I've been putting Christmas fern in this patch so that when the anemones die back the Christmas fern are there. And then we have the Jack in the Pulpit and the Golden Alexanders and I don't know if you see it yet but my Jack in the Pulpits have something wrong with them. So maybe some sort of fungus but what I've noticed is is that the Jack in the Pulpits aren't the only ones that have a problem. My spotted St. John's wort, the perennial herbaceous St. John's wort, um, is looks like it's getting a rust type fungus as well. And so I'm a little concerned about this, but most of what I read says just to remove the leaves and these plants will, um, they'll survive it. I just don't know. <clears throat> I do think, let me pop over here real quick. We had a holly over here that we inherited with the house and it wasn't a native holly and it went all the way around here and I had my husband cut it back and last year it got something and I think it's called, I think it was called a tar, holly tar or something like that. Let me see if these little pieces have anything. I don't know, maybe those spots are it. <clears throat> but anyway, I didn't have him cut that down until just um, this year. And so I'm wondering if it spread a little bit in some other form. Just a quick look at the native hedgerow here. It'll be a while before the bushes fill in. A lot of the greenery you see on the ground there is the Virginia creeper. Um, but, you know, things are coming together. This is a habitat that I want primarily for wildlife and the birds. Um, so coming back to the woodland garden, Caesar's garden, here are the Hypericum prolificums, the shrubby St. John's wort that um, were cut back by half. Now we've had some pretty big rainstorms, so you can see they're um, down a little bit, which is fine. Um, but they will have beautiful blooms here shortly. On the other side of me is this oak tree that I had to take down um, last year, which was just so very sad. But then I have, a, it had like a little, I don't know, like a little cutout in it because the the way the the tree roots were wrapping around each other. There's a name for that. I can't think of what it is right now. So then I put these uh, sticks down and branches down to make a little habitat there. And so that's being covered by Virginia creeper. And then some a fern here, this has made its way over here on its own, as well as some, I think it's Carex flaccosperma right there. So I thought that that was like a really pretty combination that just naturally occurred. Anyway, here is behind the Hypericum prolificum, I have um, Joe Pieweed. Something's eating on it, which is fine. And then down here with, I have my bottled gentians that I absolutely love. So those will be blooming soon. And they have just this beautiful like Christmas tree outdoor like Christmas light look to them. They're so beautiful and they're just like cobalt blue. What I did here though is because the deer used to get to them, they haven't been on them too much this year. Maybe I've just done a little bit better of a job with the, the spring, but um, late in the spring, I put a rosemary in here and I have one over there somewhere. I gotta move it because obviously it's not getting any sun. I hope this rosemary will get to become um, a shrub 
type size and so the scent will ward off the deer here is um a red cedar the only other thing that i'm thinking is does red cedar the rust does that impact hollies i don't think it does and if so does it also have some sort of impact on my jack in the pulpits and my spotted saint john's wort i don't know anyway i'm just hoping this is like one year and done for this problem back here i have some purple flowering raspberry the japanese beetles will get to this but anyway the leaves are so beautiful and big and chartreuse i just love them and this actually i dug out the purple flowering raspberry last year or the year before i grew it from seed and I put it somewhere else because the deer were getting to it. Well, I guess just little shoots of it stayed, so um, that's just a really welcome surprise and it's fitting in really well with everything else. I do see a jump seed I need to pull. Yeah, gotta get that out. This is, there's a native jump seed that I have. Oh, I didn't get it all. I have the native jump seed and then I have that painter's palette jump seed, which is invasive. Okay, so again, this is my patch of Jack of the Pulpit, and I wanted to take this video today to show you, but these, all these leaves are going to come off today or tomorrow because I don't want it spreading anywhere. It Usually, I wouldn't take back the Jack of the Pulpits until um, the beginning of July. Okay, let's see. Right here is a red bud, and this thing was huge, and so was this one over here I'll do that in a second but um, I saw a video by I think his name is Jim Putnam Hort tube and he was doing some pruning he has a series on pruning and the my red buds were getting so many bushes on or I'm sorry my red buds were getting so many big huge branches and leaves and they're they're just gorgeous but look the caliper of the trunk is so small so he was he was pruning back some of his trees because for the same reason so that in a storm it wouldn't fall over and also it would give the, the tree a chance to like build that bigger caliper of a trunk here's the other one so there's the trunk and then Here's the redbud. Now all the, this whole area was covered by the redbud branches, so I took those all out. I'm seeing over here on my jack in the pulpits more of this yellow spotted fungus or rust or whatever it is, which is really sad for this year. If anybody actually knows what this is, I'd love to hear from you. I've never seen this before since I've lived here. Um, Here's the non-native astilbes, which are starting to bloom. And now it looks like the May apples have something similar, but this is the, nat the normal time that they would die back anyway. So that might be natural. I'm not 100%. Here's my witch hazel. And this, my witch hazel always get this gall, which is not harmful at all to the witch hazel. And so it just adds a little interest, I guess, to the to the plant. Looks like I need to pull some of those branches in before the deer get them. But the deer actually have stayed off them this spring. It seems like that staking method where I pull up the cage as time goes on has actually been working. Oh, look at this. I love this. I love to see these leaves. Those um, cutouts half moon cutouts are from the um, leaf cutter bee. I just love to see evidence of the leaf cutter bee on my leaves. Things look a little messy right now, but it's mainly because of the storms that went through. Everything's gonna pop up once they, the sun comes out and everything starts drying off. So that's pretty much Caesar's garden, what I call Caesar's garden. So then down here is what I call the, I'm calling the emerald garden. So this is just predominantly green and white. Um, the only color I really have down here are the green and golds, and they're about to go over, or they are going over. So if you followed me for a while, hopefully 
my experiment by planting the bare root um, uh, Pachysandra, native Pachysandra amongst the jack in the pulpits will work and this won't be a big bare spot when the jack of the pulpits die back or I'll probably cut them back because of that problem. Oh, there are mosquitoes everywhere today. Golden ragwort. So this bed here, this emerald garden here and here is all just a lot of Allegheny Pachysandra, golden ragwort, ferns, um, Carex flaccosperma, whitewood aster, Solomon seal. Just pretty much a block of green. Oops. I think the last time I showed you this area, it hadn't greened up yet. But um, what we have here is just a carpet of Virginia creeper. And then I have uh, fringe trees and service berries. Back there are, I think it's New York fern. Here's the dry creek bed. The lyre leaf sage have gone over. They're just so cute. This is all lyre leaf sage. I should have taken a picture when it was all in bloom. This is just more ferns and Carex flaccosperma, um, Hookera, Tiarella, just pretty much just a lot, a lot of green here. Here is wood reed grass. This is the grass that I really, really liked last year. Now it's getting a little bigger and I still really am loving this woodland grass. It's called wood reed grass. I'm gonna do a lot more of that for my woodland. Here is the Carex rosea and radiata intermixed with Tiarella. And then on this side is the Carex flaccosperma. This is the Carex rosea radiata and the Tiarella. This is looking at the woodland garden from the yard. So the dry creek bed. And there are, you know, the different sedges that I put together with the Tiarella. I need a lot more Tiarella up here to contrast the leaf shape, to have the leaf shape contrast with um, the leaf shape of the sedges. I really like this look right here. The fern coming over and into the dry creek bed with the sedges and then the grasses. Just there's a lot of different textures here and shapes that I really like about this part of the garden. And see if you can see here, like the sedge leaves just dominate. So I need a bigger, I need that Tiarella or hookah or whatever I have over here to Kind of spread over here. This is a new bed that I did last year and we have the Philadelphia flea bane going over but we have the great blue lobelia coming up and then the um, obedient plant that's a button bush behind it and then this is gray sedge it's the first year I have used it I think I might give it a haircut I'm finding that with our native sedges, I like to give them haircuts <laughs> to keep them looking a little tidier. So this is all woodland flux here that's died back. And then I have golden ragwort going here and then a hypericum prolificum right there.
I'm gonna cut this non-native azalea all the way back to the, the ground probably when I get back from vacation. So this is also a new bed. And so in here I have like the Carex flaccosperma. There should be three there. And I think I'm gonna just do like ferns in here. Maybe some Christmas fern or Dryopteris ferns. But then I have the, the um, Carex lorita or sh shallow sedge. Shallow sedge. And that, the color contrasts with the flaccosperma. So that's great, but I also wanna get the the fern textures in here and then I have golden alexanders and it looks like I need something else with a big leaf. I did big leaf asters in here the other year but I'm not sure if they made it. I grew them from seed. I don't see any. Okay it's getting a little too mosquito-y for me out here. So let me just show you one thing. Here's some really cool seersucker sedge. I'm loving this sedge, and I think I'm gonna do more groupings of it around, around the garden, because I just really like it. And then, in fact, there's a little pile of wood for uh, insect habitat. And then here is my little pond, still not done. I gotta put, so I wanna put something so you can't see this, but that is pickerel weed and Carex Placosperma, and I want this um, golden ragwort to take over and go around. Actually, that can be the, the big leaf thing for this area. Hmm, okay. So yeah, so that is the woodland garden. I'm not sure if you can see it so well on camera, but anyway, it's looking pretty good right now. This definitely hasn't been its best year because of whatever's impacting the jack in the pulpits. Very sad. Oh, this is brand new. These have never, ever, this is the first year they've bloomed. I grew these wine cups from seed two years ago. So they didn't bloom last year. I planted them here to just be around this stepping stone. And this is the first year they're blooming. Oh my gosh, how cute. Okay. So yeah, we'll move on from the woodland garden because that's a little bit of a sad situation with the jack in the pulpits, but I do want to show you really quick. Oh, a couple things blooming. Here are our native sun drops. And then, oh, here we go. I'm gonna get these on camera. Fire pink, like one of my absolute favorites. Fire pink in front of some, um, Oh, spiderwort. It's a coral honeysuckle. And then real quick, let me show you the poppies. Just because they're looking good right now. beautiful poppies and then I'm gonna go inside because it is so mosquito-y okay guys that is it for today I just wanted to show you a little bit of the woodland garden my trials and tribulations with the woodland garden this year and um, yeah that's it Thank you for watching and subscribing and please consider sharing my YouTube channel. Thank you guys and I will see you again next time.